And so they would lay them. They were on pallets and they were doing stuff. And I remember because when I finally got up on the platform and I came over, I said, I stood there and looked down at them and I said, some of you have been this way a long time. Some of you have waited for this night for a long time. And I said, but I can tell you, Jesus has waited for this night even longer. And so they're all listening and they had interpreters and that kind of stuff talking to them. And so when we finished, I just spoke a few minutes and then just went over and kind of jumped off the platform, kind of down the middle of them, started laying hands on them, told the people there, tell them to do what they couldn't do before. And they started telling them. People started getting up. I started walking through. The only way I could get through was walking through the middle. They even had the pews and then chairs. I mean, literally, I had to turn sideways to get through. There was no, there was no room. And there was no way I could get to the middle, to the people in the middle of the pews. There was no way to line them up or do any of that kind of stuff. And so I'm just going through and I said, when I come to your row, everybody just grab hands. So everybody grabbed each other's hands. And as I went through, I would grab the hands on the end and begin to command. And I said, all right, now do what you couldn't do. And people in the middle all of a sudden would jump up and start moving. And people even on the far ends, all of a sudden, they'd get healed. And people were getting healed by holding the people's hands in the center. I wasn't touching them. But the power of God is like electricity. It can be transferred from one person to another. And so that's what I was doing. And it was going through. And then this one lady passed her baby all the way across. I mean, they're handing the baby across. And I'm seeing this little baby come toward me. So I stay there for a minute, and when they get down there, they hand the baby. So I take the baby. The baby's burning up with fever. And so I'm holding the baby, and I'm going through. And I didn't even, I wasn't thinking about it. I didn't pray for the baby. I never prayed for the baby. I'm just holding her and going through, and I'm touching these people and grabbing their hands and touching these people. And I'm not there. I'm just walking on through, but I'm walking away with this woman's baby. (laughs) You know? And, and at one point, I remember, oh, yeah, I got a baby here. <laughs> okay. And I turned and looked, and the lady's kind of, she was like this. She, she stood up, and she's like, you know, like, where are you going with my baby? And so I kept praying for people, kept ministering to them, and just holding the baby. And so then I started to go back through there, and I took the baby and handed it. Never prayed, never said anything, never commanded, nothing. Just held the baby, and then passed it back, and they passed it back, and whenever the baby got to the mother, the mother screamed and started crying. And I thought, what, what happened? And so they, we could hear talking, but I didn't understand it. And so then my interpreter there said, uh, whenever the mother got the baby back, all the fever's gone. Amen. I never prayed. Why? But we have to remember, greater is he that is in you yes. than he that's in the world. See, there's a reality to this that most Christians never get a hold of. We are given the opportunity to be a totally different species of being. One that is recreated exactly in the likeness and image of Jesus Christ. Now, how different was he? And so we have that opportunity. Why? First off, we're made different. We have been made different. We've been born again. We're new creation. But too often, we never put off that old man and we never quit acting like the old man. And we keep doing that. And as long as you act like that, you'll never settle into the new man and be who you are. And you'll keep, your mind will keep thinking, well, this is the way, that's not normal, this is normal. No, no, no. If you're normal, you're not normal as a Christian. Christians were never meant to be normal. There's nothing in the Bible that says, be normal. It says, be you perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. Right? But it never says be normal. But we can't do that if we don't get our heads right and realize that the Bible is true. And it's hard to be Christian, be this new man, when every day you live with a body that's not acting the way it's supposed to. Because there's a constant reminder. You're, sometimes you're not, you know, because of an addiction, a habit, or something along those lines that constantly every day pulls you back and reminds you, no, 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 don't stray too far. Remember, I own you. So we can't, 
We don't get to be this new person, even though we are. But our soul and our body can be hindered. And we keep being the same way we were before. And we think, oh, it'll never change. This will never change. Might as well give up. Might as well quit. Might, you know, just, you know, nobody likes you anyway. Just go ahead and kill yourself. You, you don't fit in. But guess what? Jesus didn't fit in. All the people that everybody thought was right looked down on him. They said he had a devil. But we have to realize that Jesus wants you free. And I don't just mean even just a physical healing or just this or just that. No, free. Let me tell you, when you're free, you want to set other people free because you know how, how good it feels. And so you just want to give it away. And you don't have to put on some hype and show and do all that kind of stuff. You can just walk through life. <laughs>